This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have two Olympians. That's right, professional track and field, unbelievable athletes, Alia Agamdi, Kevin Dilworth, the dynamic duo here on Entrepreneurs the Playbook. Welcome, you two. I love track and field because I think it's so applicable to what entrepreneurs have to go through. And I'm sure we'll tie that in. But the reason I think that track and field uh, coaches and athletes, Kevin, you being both a coach and an athlete, um, you know, looking at the consistent part of it, you know, we, as track and field athletes, you don't see the progress, but you see the consistency and you have to trust and put faith in the progress side. And I, I think that's the main lesson of being an entrepreneur. They never see the progress and they see the struggle, the pain, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual pain that's involved. But it's not like every day they're like, oh my gosh, we're making money day one. Athletes don't see the 0.1 uh, second or the 0.1, in, the, the millimeter you know, of, of progress that it takes. How as a coach, Kevin, I'm gonna start with you. How do you get, Amalia to look at the progress, even though she can't feel it, see it, touch it, and just trust that come some, you know, world final or the Olympic trials that somehow they're going to be a PR or the progress that you promise. Well, we basically got to think about the moment. We're always living in the moment. We don't worry about what's ahead, what's behind, what's happening right now. The mindset that we have to develop like you said, the consistency. You have to have a consistency of desire and commitment and development every single day, no matter what, no matter how you feel, if you show up, that means you're ready. You can't come with anything else because you might not feel good at the Olympic trials. You may not feel good when you get to the Olympic games and you still have to run no matter how you feel. So the consistency of changing your mindset is the most important thing that I choose to pull out of my athletes every single day. We have to come here with a mindset knowing that it's going to hurt. It's going to not feel good. But pain is connected to passion. Always know that. If you have a passion for it, pain's right there waiting on the sideline, ready to get jump into. Oh, yeah. You know, one of the common denominators of all the successful people that we've had on the playbook uh, is this desire, which I call, you must be what you can be. And everybody has different potentials. I could work out from now until the end of this lifetime and never be as fast or as strong as you, Alia. But I have my own potential. You know, I always joke around and people ask me, when's the closest you came to your potential, Dave? I said, I was an average, th an average division three football player, but for my potential, my unathletic being, that was, you know, it took a lot of consistent, persistent behavior. How do you maintain that desire? Because it gets so monotonous, especially in, in track where, you know, there's a lot of monotonous detail in the workouts, the training, the stretching, the taping, all the things that just people don't see that just suck about being a track and field athlete. How do you maintain that must be what you can be desire? I don't know. For me, I can speak only for myself. For me, um, maintaining it is because when you have a goal, I had a goal like for almost now, but by 2021, it'll be nine years. And I worked for first first Olympic I was supposed to go to when things didn't work. And I was like, okay, I either go this way or I mean, I either continue training or I give up. So I continue training for another four years. And you always have to push yourself. It's like, okay, one, only, only four years, but it's not four years. You think, I thought it's going to be a long time, but it went by so quickly. Um, when you have a goal that you meant to do it and you know the only person can do it is you, I mean, the determination, dedication, it can never be given to you or you can never be like, you can't buy it, you can't borrow it. You either have it, you either have that passion, that drive, or nobody will. Sometimes we get like lazy or we talk ourselves out of not going, but then you know that one day you're missing is somebody else is getting better in every aspect of life, whether business, whether anything else. Also having great coach that hold you accountable and uh, the satisfaction that we get when we achieve, when he said, I expect you to run this time and you run what he wants or even better. And the satisfaction that we get out of 
every session that leads us to the next session because we know it's going to be either just as good or better. So for me, like the satisfaction that I get is like the best of the best, like when you achieve, when you do really good, execute our practice basically. And Alia, how do you also not attach your emotions your happiness to an outcome. You know, I sit on the Olympic, US Olympic board myself, and one of the most difficult things, just as a board member, you know, I was looking forward to this summer, taking my entire family, you know, and I'm not participating, but you know, I've spent so much time, money, and attention to helping everybody. And my emotions, I was like, wait, I teach people not to attach their emotions. I had a huge letdown. How did you separate that knowing that there's a whole nother year now that you have to be prepared to, for, your, for your dream? Well, I came a long way, to be honest. I was to live in Saudi Arabia and then I lived in Europe and then I have moved my entire life all around my sport, uh, lifestyle, friends, moving places, making new friends. So it, just like I said, just you have the drive and you have the passion on you and uh, um, if you know what you meant to do in this life, and if you have a vision, I don't like the word dream, because sometimes you have to sleep for them to happen, or they have, I mean, for me, I always say a goal, focus, and just hard work, and I, I, I really, sometimes when people have the passion, it's sometimes really, really hard to explain, or hard to put it into words, because you live it, you see it, you sleep it, you eat it, it just, you your life revolved around your passion, whether it's sport, whether business, and your, 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 your passion will revolve around your sport, and everything eventually will fall into a place if you really dedicate yourself to it. Anything. That's my Co perspective. And Coach Kevin, you know, a lot of people don't realize in all sports, but particularly in track and field, mindset uh, is so important. And utilizing the accountability of being a coach, but understanding how do I coach mindset? Most people think it's technique, you know, that you have to have this great eye. What percentage, number one, do you think it is mindset as a coach? And then two, how do you coach mindset? Well, we go in percentages when we talk about things like that. We say showing up to practice is one thing. Training is another. Competing is another. The competing is 10%. Boom, that's in the bag. We got that. Here comes the 60% of the mindset to where true development, because one thing about track and field is an individual sport. It's you against the clock, you against the tape measure. It's you against the workout that day. So you got to know that either the workout gets me or I get the workout. And it comes times in the middle of the workout, the workout sometimes will say, I have you. Uh, I got you. But then there's something inside of you that says, no, because I know where I want to be when it comes to having that 10% that I want to have. And that, what is the thing? That's that fire because you can't really just coach mindset. It's the individual. It's how bad the individual wants it. It's what we call the want to factor. If you want it, you go get it. If you will it, then it will happen. But if you do neither, I can't do nothing for you. I can't go and say, hey, I got a bag of want to. Here we go, baby. <laughs> get in there and get some. Yeah, I got it for everybody, but we don't have that. It has to be instilled in the athlete, that passion, that desire, that will, that want to, no matter what. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the job done. I tell my athletes every single time, you have to have a little bit of chaos and be a little bit of a maniac to be an attractive field athlete just because what comes with it. It's a lot that comes with it, pain, suffering, lifting. Track and field is total athleticism because we don't have 10 more guys to help us out like football. We don't have four more guys to jump with us like basketball. It's you against time and measurement, plain and simple. It's so awesome. And one of the other things that I love about track and field, that it's one of the few things, you know, you get between usually one and three plays, right? You, you work years. Yes. To get the opportunity to have one play or, you know, some events, three plays. Yes. Um, and that creates a lot of external pressure. Mm. And Alia, you have to deal with that pressure. I, I tell people right now in these compressed times of uncertainty, the thing I like about pressure is the old analogy about a lemon, right? You squeeze a lemon, lemon juice comes out. 
Why? Because that's what's inside a lemon. You know, we get to find out what's truly inside of us when you wait four years or eight years or 10 years for that one play, right? Football players have it easy. You know, they, I was a defensive back, right? They used to always say, you just got to have a short memory that, you know, it's pretty hard to have a short memory if you, you know, don't, you know, get off the blocks and fall and you don't get to run. You know, you can't have a short memory. We wait four more years to go. So how how do you deal with pressure and what advice would you give to people today? Because we're all under, you know, extraordinary compressed uncertainty and pressure. Oh my gosh, where do we start, Coach Kevin? How would you? <laughs> As we speak right now, I feel my stomach is just going like that, thinking about pressure. Pressure, actually, we hit pressure toward like literally the last quarter of our practice, or the, I'm talking for myself, or the last quarter of the race, or the last quarter of the set. Sometimes, if Coach said we're going to do 10, always the last three is the hardest. If he said 15, always the last five is the hardest. It's something about it is like when your mind, when you are about to finish, this is the pressure. If you're talking about pressure as an athlete inside the um, track and field like sessions every day, I, I run with great athletes. Like, as you know, Coach Kevin is very precise about choosing his athletes. Athletes do not choose Coach Kevin. He pick his athletes. So I train with other girls that they've been to the Olympics and stuff. So I, sometimes I feel tired or lactic hits you and you look at other girls, two things. I could either see them tired. It's like, oh, okay, I'm stronger. Or I could see them tired or it's like, oh my gosh, they are tired. I, I, I'm tired too. So it just all, you play mind game with yourself, to yourself, basically. It just all, just mind game with ourselves. And sometimes like when the body breaks, I tell myself, okay, the body's giving up. Now it's all about the mindset. So, in the, in the last practice for Coach, Coach Kevin is this practice of ending fear. You know, either people use fear and they overwork themselves. I've seen it in track and field athletes. It, it, you know, they're, they, they have that must be bag that you're talking about. It's the entrepreneur business. Uh, if you and I can bottle it, we'll be billionaires in a day. If we, if we can be the must be bottle, we'll sell it all day long. But you know, I was one of those OCD. Uh, my business partner is a uh, Hall of Fame quarterback, Warren Moon. And he, he had the same problem, right? We, we had to learn to go to neutral to not overwork, right? You obsess on it. You know, there's a practice of ending fear that allows you to be in neutral as well. Uh, are there some tricks or advice that you give to your athletes if you see them overdoing it or over worrying or overworking? Well, like I say, we always focus on the moment. We focus on that rep. My athletes always ask me in the beginning, coach, what's for practice? What are we doing for practice? Yeah. Because at that moment, they're trying to get their minds set around 500s, 300s, 200s. How many? What's the time? So they're setting themselves up saying, okay, okay. So the whole time, if I give it to them in the beginning, they're thinking about it in warm up, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die today. Oh my gosh. So I just, wait until the warm up because I want nothing to interfere at that time. I want them to think about it as soon as we get ready to step up. This is what we have. This is how many we have. All right. Everything right now is one rep at a time. Let's not worry about time. Let's not worry about anything else. Let's worry about being consistent. I want consistent time measures. That is going to measure your athleticism throughout this workout. That is what we're trying to achieve today so it's no worry how many but when we get to that point and i see it that's when i jump in and says all right here we go i see where you're at i see you keep looking down i see that you're tired what do you want the most how bad do you want it a lot of my athletes have to go to trials so guess what this is the third round what's going to happen in order to make it to the finals what's going to happen right now let's get it done So you got to go ahead and give them something that is connected to their discipline to where they can focus on that at that moment. Say, all right, I have to make finals. I didn't come here for one race. I didn't come here for two races. I came here to be a finalist. I came here to be an Olympic athlete. Boom. Here we go. Let's get it done. So that's how we channel that. That's so important and great explanation of being present. And Alia, last question. Through, Through being the third woman to represent your company, 
your country. And obviously it's significant of any woman coming from your culture in your country to be represented at the Olympics for the world to see, which is substantial. Coach Kevin's an integral part of that as an accountability partner, giving you situational knowledge, inspiration and motivation, as you could tell right here on the, on the playbook. But I always know that coaches and owners and, you know, agents even, we're all known for like that one lesson that someone says, you know, like be kind to your future self, do good deeds. What's the one lesson if I said, you know, what's that legacy of Coach Kevin that he's taught you that you think not only will change your life, but change other people's lives? I think it wouldn't be completely fair if I say Coach Kevin taught me one thing I learn every single thing from him. If he would, anybody would come and watch us, like sometimes we go to the track and we have our sessions on the side. We literally would have people sitting on the side watching us. The common thing I have with Coach Kevin that we really both have passion for our sport and we really love it. Some coaches just sit there and busy on their phone. They want to get in and get out. But Coach Kevin, when I hit numbers he want me to hit, he will be jumping up and down, happy about it. I'm going to look at him. It's like, I did the number. Now, why are you so happy? Like, he would be like, yeah, baby, you jumping. He would be like insanely happy. That satisfaction, I feed from. When you see your coach, Bob, what he does, Coach Kevin will come any day, every day, all day. Sometimes we have times off or weeks off and I have like a bad day or whatever, something I would call him and say, I have a bad day. Can you go work out? Done. You can, you can rely. And I give, like I said, whatever I end up in my career, I give big credit to my coach, Kevin, because I notice a lot of people sometimes, people, uh, coaches in general, they would say, I coach such and such and such. But rarely we hear athletes give credit to their coaches. Like people say, I coach Michael Jordan, I coach Kobe, I coach LeBron. It's great. But do we ever see coaches giving credits and mention their coaches by names? I, I don't think I've ever seen it for myself. So uh, but I feed my passion through my coach's passion. And this is the most important thing for me that I learned from him. Well, I've learned that as well. I can see the authenticity and the love that he shares, not only for you, but for the sport itself. And that's what makes people great. And I wish I could bottle that ingredient because we need more of it, not only on the track, but off the track in the world today. People, we need toughness uh, and perspective and a lot of love and light and lessons that you're learning from Coach Kevin. And I'm going to be rooting for you for the next year. I will see you. Uh, in Asia together uh, next summer. I am sure of it. And you have another big fan, Alia. And thank you, Coach Kevin, joining me here, teaching so many great lessons for the playbook. And this is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, the Playbook. <laughs>